Hey, what's up, guys? The Flixer again. Welcome back to Men of War Assault Squad 2 and Rob's Surrealism mod. If you guys saw the previous video, you can probably already tell where we are today. We are indeed back on the granary map used in the previous battle, but it's no longer set during the late summer of 1942, but more like the winter of 1943. So before we start today's tug of war, let me show you how I, how I converted this map from one setting to another. Alright, so first I changed the ground textures to fit the season. I went with a mix of untouched snow and a more muddy and grassy variant. Then I removed all the grass and uh, changed the texture of all objects to winter. Some objects don't have one or use a different name, so I went down the list and uh, changed the rest manually. Sometimes it's called win1 instead of just win and some use a number, most often just one. Then it was time to paint some winter grass over the spots that needed some filling in, and that was pretty much it. Hope you guys try this for yourself. It's really fun, and it doesn't take a lot of time. All right, as you could tell, a fairly simple process. I am excited now to start the battle, though, but um, one thing I do have to say is that I recorded the... Um, well, everything you saw up till this point was recorded yesterday. I couldn't finish the video by recording the battle because my office was closing, um, and I usually sit here quite late. I didn't want to quite push it. I uploaded a story the other day when I was here to, like, I don't know, seven minutes before the alarm goes on, and I don't know, there's a whole security team coming out here, and I have to pay, like, $500 if I, if I overstay, so I didn't want to take the risk this time around because I was going to push it a lot closer than that. Besides, uh, pushing out content or stressing to get it done is usually not the best way to go about things um at least that makes me feel kind of meh, meh about it you know but so the the reason why i'm declaring this is because during the night i might have picked up a bit of a cold not so much a cold but more of a sore throat i don't think it's gonna be an issue in this battle today but i thought i'd just clarify why not i mean Clarify. De declare. I do declare. I do declare. Alright guys, it's time to get the tug of war started. And before I hit that start button though, I do want to explain the setup. So we have a total of five waves being deployed within the 10 minute tug of war action timer, one could say. That's when everything is being brought to the battlefield in varying instances, right? And during these 10 minutes, uh, one infantry wave will spawn every 120 seconds. Of course, that's two minutes. And, um, Towards the end of the 10 minute timer, a total of 400 men will have set their foot on today's battlefield. Yes, I could go every 60 seconds, you know, one wave every minute, but I think that would, I think that would make the battlefield too clogged, it would slow things down, and it would make every single soldier less impactful, it would make him less important, right? Uh, also, something I gotta fix is a mouse that has a working scroll wheel. Until that day, I will have to lock my camera because I'm going insane and going out and in all the time. I also increased the, the hastiness a bit. You know, it's a little bit more misty. I think it works well with the setting. Um, aside from that, um, during these 10 minutes, we will see three waves of armor. The first one will come in with the second wave of infantry, so that's after two minutes. The third one will arrive after three minutes, and the uh, third and final one will arrive after five minutes, just at the end of the uh, the timer, right? So they're also going to vary in classes. Um, the first wave is uh, light tanks, the second wave is medium tanks, the third one is medium and heavy. I'll explain it when it arrives, you'll see how I've been thinking. Um, yeah, and aside from that, the final feature would be the randomized artillery strikes uh, hitting the battlefield every 15 seconds. And it's Finally time to get the tug of war started. I feel like the intro has been going on for a whole day, but that's just because I started the video yesterday. You know, um, five seconds ago, I had three tacos. Tacos, you know? Three of them. Pretty insane. Like, could you imagine I just took a break after explaining the battle and then just ate three tacos? Oh, God, yeah. Fuck yeah. And then I got to the action. That's insane, dude. So, yeah, I mean, I'm probably overreacting. This intro has not been that long, but I feel like I've been like prolonging this battle for days. Anyway, you just heard the first impact of that very randomized artillery I was speaking about. It hit back here 
pretty close to some of the German infantry. Anyway, so the Germans are arriving from the same attacking direction as yesterday. Well, not yesterday, but as the previous fight. Bloody hell, that was like last Sunday. They've got the great coats and the winter helmets. The uh, Russians or the Soviets have the, um, I do believe, the Tello uniform or the Tilo. I'm not sure. That's what the editor calls it. It's a padded uniform um, with... Um, I suppose heat insulation or something like that. Uh, they also have the Yushankas instead of the regular good old conscript cap. And the squad leaders have the sheepskin uh, coat or the parka. And the battle is on, ladies and gentlemen. So the Soviets were quick to uh, gain control of the center. Um, they're in the open, though. Not a lot of cover here except for the craters. Uh, but the rest are staying prone. It seems to do the trick. The Germans uh, will find themselves behind slightly more formidable cover back here. Many uh, choose to remain out in the open. Some are running back for the craters. But there's a lot of hard cover here on the right side. Lots of buildings that they will ultimately share with each other. Piece of quiet here for a second. As the 80 or so, or whatever is left of the first wave, is kind of getting their bearing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Germans occupy this, uh, this building here, overlooking the center of the map. This is a nice hard point with lots of cover around it and uh, just a great view of the battlefield. Um, the Soviets don't have that same option except for this trench. And the Soviet left flank is very heavily fortified, very formidable, lots of defenses all over the place, so that's quite nice. Uh, the downside of the Soviet side is, though, that the right side is very open, um, as opposed to the slightly more covered German left side. Anyway, the first armor has arrived, guys. It is on the Soviet side of things. Time to bring up three T-26s. Now, some of you might argue, oh, these are super early war tanks, they weren't used. Well, they were produced in such large numbers that they saw frontline action for the majority of the war. Um, of course, as other tanks became more and more available, uh, they they started seeing more, you know, rearguard duty and whatnot. But um, I did read accounts of these being uh, used during the Battle of Stalingrad. And what might surprise you even more is that the German tanks, the Panzer 38s here, part of the first wave, uh, were actually given to the 22nd Panzer Division in a full formation, right? Not just a few tanks, like an actual formation of uh, Panzer 38s were given to the 22nd Panzer Division during the Battle of Stalingrad towards the end when it was time to counterattack and try and break the Soviet encirclement. Um, so uh, that was actually the last time they were deployed in such numbers. So why not use them? In this very same case to mark the the uh, the last breath of the Panzer 38. Of course, it is any units uh, surviving said uh, battle, and uh, you know any any units active on other front lines would be used in in limited duties, just the same as the T26. You know, rear guard, reserve duty, and whatnot. Not very much active frontline combat. They seem to be a pretty even match, though. Most of these have had their tracks disabled, and right now they're just trading shots with each other. Oh, that T-26 is gonna go down. We have two um, Panzer 38s on the left side here, on the German left, and another two T-26s on the Soviet left. Both are very close to the opposing side infantry, and that might... Oh, that was a friendly hit. That might not be very good for him, because the... Even the the lighter hand grenades will deal with these tanks at, with ease. Um, uh, we're talking Molotov cocktails and any infantry AT grenades available at the time. How is the trade going? The, the, the T-26s are still active. There goes one of the P-38s. There are two remaining as far as I'm concerned. One is over here. Where's the third? We've only seen two so far. But there's a third. Well... Could have been struck by random artillery, it could be hiding back here somewhere, it could even be disabled, we don't know. We will find out later, because the focus needs to be, uh, needs to remain here on the center. Okay, tracks down. 
This T26 is still active. It's a little shook up. There's a lot of German infantrymen nearby. Do we have anyone here with AT grenades? It doesn't look like it. In fact, they're using it as cover. Oh, that friendly shot hit the one of the German troops. There we go. That T26 is down, guys. And I think it's time for the second wave. Indeed, it is. So the Soviets have now, after five minutes of active fighting, received three T-34 42s with the uh, 76 mil F-34 main gun. Um, it'll be interesting to discuss the third wave, which is going to be a bit different later on. But I do believe I've reached some kind of a balance here. Anyway, they're going to deal with that uh, center P-38. And, oh, the third one has displayed itself after some time in hiding. I like seeing the smoke pillars rise from the center now. It, it, the German infantry is definitely in control of the center now. But uh, the Soviets are going to receive more hard cover here on the left side, as well as the right. There's some good walls back there. The Germans are going to be a little bit more exposed now as they're pushing up. Um, on the German side of things, they've received three Stug 3s. Now, yes, of course, these are hull-mounted guns, assault howitzers, um, similar firepower, um, but not quite the same thing. Uh, it might even itself out a little bit more in the third wave, which we will see deployed in a few minutes from now. That P-38 just took out... Wait. Did it just take out a T-34? And what is the... Wait, what's going on? I saw a big explosion. I think that was the fuel tank. This one is focused on another target. Could be the... One of the flanking assault guns. But, I mean, the, the priority right now should be to knock out the enemy armor. The Soviet infantry is not going to have a great time knocking out the German armor. So, what the T-34s are doing right now, I cannot explain. But this one's going on a on a rampage right here. I think the assault guns, the Stokes, are staying in the rear. So that's not really benefiting the German ar uh, infantry too much. They could actually need some tank support up here by the front, but um, this one is just uh, running circles around the infantry here, distracting them. This might be good for the Soviet infantry so that they can move up. You don't want to lose tracks out there in the open. Oh, what the? Look at that. That's a punch to the face. A second one. Oh, no, they're a bit shook up. Here we go. Returning fire now. P-34s. Come on, guys. You aren't chewing a cat or something, right? Are we going to see that main gun fire on a very appropriate target right in front of you? There we go. That's going to pierce right through. Okay, so it looks like the tank situation has been evened out a bit. But the uh, German infantry is in supreme control. Or at least, well, the, the, the scale is definitely in their advantage right now. This is not very balanced at all. Um, and I believe the somewhat slacking Soviet armor has led to this. It, it, it'll take some... It'll take a, a, a true push here and a lot of courage for the Soviet infantry to push back. Once again, the assault guns are staying in the rear. Both seem to be uh, centered around the middle here. We have a third one. Um, but it is not yet... Oh, here it is. It's on the far right. Cool. So that's a nice positioning. They've got like a, a battery of static guns just supporting the infantry from the rear. More Soviet infantry are arriving right now. We got some fighting around this right side. A lot of open ground here. Not good at all for either of the two sides. It's a little bit more manageable here on the left side. But it looks like the Germans are controlling most of the ruins right now. And the Soviets are left to the buildings back here and most of the craters. But they're, there. they're also mustering a lot of firepower. One P-34 remains. And uh, the Stug 3 is at distance. Did not seem to have enough uh, power to really punch through its front armor. In fact, they seem to be missing a bit. Oh, there we go. That one bounced as well. The T-34 is, is adequately positioned here in a situation like this. Oh. But, I mean, I don't know how many rounds it can withstand. It's going to have a limit, just like everything. But so far, it is supporting the uh, Soviet infantry, which might be a good thing to do. It doesn't seem to be too bothered with 
shooting back at the, the, the various assault guns firing at it right now. And I think firing at the infantry is what's going to benefit the Soviet infantry the most right now. Because they, they need some breathing room. All right, guys. Ten minutes of fighting have passed. Can you believe it? Time just flies by. The third and final wave has been deployed. Now, I was struggling to find a, a, a proper Soviet tank for this. In fact, the reason why I chose to put the T-34s as wave 2 was because I couldn't find any middle ground to, like, match the Stug 3s with, right? The, I didn't want to bring in the SU-85s because I think they were deployed later on. Um, and my SU-76s weren't working and it was just a bunch of shit. So I decided to bring up the T-34s as a match to the Stug 3s and just bring in two KV-1s with the um, slightly lesser main gun, but better front armor. What the fuck are you doing, dude? Honestly, I mean, I don't like doing this, but every now and then you gotta like, you gotta pitch in because we're, we're trying to have a good time here, okay? We're not, we're not racing a, we're not racing a McLaren here against a Toyota Land Cruiser, okay? There we go. Or a fucking, Prius, I guess. But, uh, so there we go. Um, otherwise, that's a finished race already before it began. So yeah, I decided to bring in two KV-1s. Better front armor, better armor overall, right? It's a heavy tank in terms of classification, but it uses the 76 F-32 instead of the F-34, which I believe is a uh, later variant, of course. The, these tanks were um, issued before the 1942 model of T-34. These are 1941 KV-1s, which would have been used as well in uh, conjunction with the uh, KV-2s and whatnot. So uh, the Germans on their side of things have received the Panzer IV Long Barrel, which was also used during the Battle of Stalingrad. Um, a bit less in numbers, but I thought it'd be a good mix for this early 1943 scenario. We'll see how they match up against the KV-1s. I think the, the strength of the KV-1s is going to be their heavy armor which is going to do them nicely against the various German equipment on the battlefield. Right now, this is, I'd say this is a 66%, two-thirds German victory so far. I mean, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. It's been shifted in the German favor f for most of the fight. I think those P-38s did phenomenally well. Things might change, though. These KV-1s might change things up. There's still a lot of infantry for both sides remaining, but that's what I like about not having the endless waves and not crowding the battlefield with too many soldiers. It makes the infantry less important. Oh! Jeez. Damn. You think testing gives you any good estimate of what makes sense? You think testing gives you a, a rough idea? It's wrong. Every single time, the game will amaze you. And it shows, it just tells you how history is decided by so many random events, and one could say almost luck as well. Oh, this is not good for the Soviet troops. On the right side, they're holding up behind this uh, warehouse. We've got Germans on both sides. One tank on the right side, that's not good at all. Do we have any AT grenades here? Do I see any? There's an officer. Submachine gunner, he might have an AT grenade. Now would be the time to use it. Both tanks are, however... Oh! Close quarter fighting. Oh, they're running around the right side now. They're escaping the tank. KV-1 moving up, despite the fact that... Oh! Look at that. They're pushing the Soviets back here on the side. Engine down, but the tank is still active. This one's knocked out. Imagine this, just the final scene by the granary here as the last remaining Soviet tanks is surrounded by Panzer IVs and assault guns and Stug threes, you know, you name it. And it's just tanking until it just took a little too much. Those Stug threes. this one was knocked out. I didn't see that happen. But two Stug 3s are going to survive, along with three Panzer IVs. For, for now, German infantry is securing the right flank, pushing the Soviets back here on the left. I'd say I wasn't really predicting this happening. But overall, a pretty cool fight. Bye.